was really thinking about this yesterday, and the last thing that I want to do is to make a political speech or a political statement specifically regarding the veterans that have given their lives and that we're supposed to be honoring on Memorial Day, and I, I don't want this to be misinterpreted as me using them as a cudgel to, you know, browbeat people or to get them to do what I want or to, to bring them over to my side of thinking just because of the soldiers that have left their lives. But I, I really felt that it would be irresponsible of me, both as a citizen and as a person that has a big platform like this, to let this go by without saying something on the matter. When each of those men gave their lives, whether you're talking about troops that were with George Washington at Valley Forge, whether you fast forward to men that, that fought in the War of 1812, whether you're talking about soldiers that wound up fighting on the beaches of Normandy or in the rice fields of Vietnam or in a desert somewhere in Iraq, regardless of what era you're talking about, regardless of the circumstances surrounding their death, what do you think they were fighting for? What do you think they envisioned as what they were trying to establish here in this country? I mean, I'm, I'm sure their reasons vary as much as the men who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. I'm sure that there were different motivations. I'm sure that looked different to different people. I mean, you, you could go back and, and look at the different tendencies within the generations and the different tendencies among veterans at that specific time from that specific war and probably get a better answer for that, at least on that specific basis. But I think one common thread that you would find with just about all of them is that they fought specifically for liberty to ensure that people back here in America, that we got to live our lives, that we got to go out and pursue our own happiness, that they, that's what they were doing. They were preserving our life, our liberty, and our ability to go out and pursue happiness, to, to go and build something, to make something of ourselves, to take care of our families, to build something really helpful that, that helps the entire world, all of those things. And I think in so many ways, a lot of what has been done in this country over the past several weeks with regards to the shutdown has been such a slap in the face to that, where we've completely ignored a lot of the rights that they thought of as being what they were dying for, what they were fighting for in that battle. The fact that we are now saying that you're not allowed to say certain things if they disagree with example for uh, with the World Health Organization or we say that that you're not allowed to go to church and worship together with your congregation or you're not allowed to gather and petition your government with a redress of gr grievances you're not even allowed to congregate in groups of larger than 10 people and and the press it's they're not going to be allowed to report things that are not in perfect lockstep with what our experts deem as accurate information. When you look at the governors, thankfully not here in Alabama, but when you look at governors across the state that have suspended gun stores and, and effectively shut down the Second Amendment, and by the way, like I said, I didn't want to make this a political thing. I'm not trying to aim specifically at the Democrats, despite the fact that I'm a conservative. I think the most egregious quote that has come out of this whole thing is when a Republican mayor told citizens, no, your rights have been suspended. Well, I, I thought the whole point of inalienable rights was that government couldn't take them away from you. That if they were granted to you by God and government's one and only job is to preserve and protect those rights and make sure other people don't abridge those rights... I thought the whole point of that was that the government couldn't just arbitrarily decide, okay, well, this is an emergency situation, so yeah, we're, we're going to suspend your rights. No, 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 unalienable means they can't be suspended. They're innate. They're a part of who I am. 
And anybody that tries to do so is acting in rebellion of God to try to suspend my rights. And so this isn't a Republican or Democrat thing. There have been a lot of people over the past several weeks, unfortunately, that have just acted like many dictators and fascists that decide that whenever I say that your rights are just put on hold, then they are. See, once I, as the executive or I, as the elected official, decide that, well, your rights are just too dangerous for you to have right now, so I'm going to have to go ahead and take them away. Isn't that the opposite of what all those men died for? Letting one person decide who gets to have rights and who doesn't? I mean, I thought that's the whole point of the reason that we fought the Nazis. That was the whole point of fighting the Civil War. That was the whole point of fighting communism in the Cold War. Like, wasn't that what we were fighting to begin with? I really do think that a lot of these people that really believe that they have the authority, elected official or not, to suspend another person's right to live their life and to go out and to make gain and to build their dreams, to pursue their own happiness, and to take care of their family in the way that they see fit, I really do think that they're spitting on the graves of the people that gave their life, generations of Americans that fought to make sure that their children and their grandchildren and from generations from that point on had the freedom to make those decisions themselves. And it really burns me up that we have flipped this whole thing on its head. What we have done is we said, no, the government will give you permission to do those things when it deems it necessary. I thought the whole point of, of having agency and having liberty was the ability to make your own decisions. And yes, sometimes those decisions have consequences, sometimes bad ones, and we bear the responsibility of those bad decisions. That's what liberty looks like. What we've been doing over the past few months, that ain't liberty. Frankly, I think it's a disgrace to the men that did give the ultimate sacrifice. And that's how I use my day off. That's how I use my Memorial Day. As I thought about that, and, and this is what I came up with. Take it or leave it, you know, tell me what you think, but I just, I don't think that that's what the vast majority of the Americans that gave their lives for this country envisioned when they died for the cause of freedom. They died for people to make their own decisions, not for a governor or a bureaucrat or somebody that has been elected on a power trip to tell people, no, your rights have been suspended. No, my rights haven't been suspended. And they never will be. They were given to me at creation by God. And you don't have the ability, you don't have the authority to take that away from me. <laughs> It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them, I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter, and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.